In this video we're going to look at quantification using tags. And just to introduce the problems of quantifying data such as these, we'll look at the basic mechanism by which quantification is performed, and that is the quantification parameters dialog window. And the idea is that we isolate a peak that we can assign to a given element. So if we bring up the element library and have the regions property page topmost, click where the peak is, identify the peak, and then if we press create, a region is created and the background specified over an interval. The relative sensitivity factor has been brought in using the line that was indicated in the element library. And if this was aluminium alone, we would be now in a state where we could continue identifying other peaks and then produce a quantification. However, in this instance, what we have is a sample where we not only have aluminium, but we also have copper. And unfortunately, copper and aluminium overlap, and they overlap in such a way that we can use neither of the aluminium 2S nor the aluminium 2P to quantify from a survey spectrum because we have copper overlapping both. And what's more, in this particular case, we have chromium. And this introduces yet another peak that overlaps with the aluminium 2P. So the only course that we can follow is to somehow use the information about the aluminium and the copper in this aluminium 2S copper 3S interval and identify signal, which we can then feed back into a quantification based on the survey spectrum. Low resolution survey data does not allow us to separate the copper from the aluminium in this interval here. So what we need to do is consider a high resolution spectrum. So if we now look at other data that have been collected at this level in this depth profile, we have a spectrum that contains peaks that we can identify as copper, the aluminium oxide, and a metallic aluminium peak. So if we have a peak model for this spectrum, we can proportion the intensity that we see here with respect to the peak model. And if we have relative sensitivity factors for each of these component peaks, we can then work out an effective relative sensitivity factor for this particular measurement, which can be used in the quantification in the survey spectrum. What is required then is a peak model for these data. In a previous video, I looked at how to produce such a peak model and I've saved part of that video work as a separate file and I've saved it in a directory that I can recover the peak model using the input file property page on the element library dialog. So here you see one of the peak models that were used in that previous video. So I can now return to the file that contained the depth profile, select in this instance just one of these aluminium copper intervals that correspond to the saved peak fit, and then I can propagate the regions, components, and we'll say fit. I won't propagate the annotation because really this is information that I've got within this VAMAS file to help me remember the conditions and the constraints for this peak model. So I'm just going to do the regions components and then I'll fit. So now if we go back to the depth profile, we have a peak model that has been fitted to these data. And the peak model includes a region and three components. And the relative sensitivity factors are in this instance set to be the same for the metal and the oxide and I've got a different sensitivity factor here for the copper 3s so as a consequence of fitting these peaks to the, the data envelope and using these relative sensitivity factors an effective relative sensitivity factor is calculated from these sensitivity factors so that if we included a region that contained this interval and use the effective RSF to scale the data, then other lines 
with their own elemental RSFs would then return the correct value for the atomic concentration. Once an effective RSF has been calculated, we now need to assign the region in the survey spectrum, or this effective RSF. So let us do this. And we'll illustrate how this works by using the survey spectrum and we'll also select the aluminium data and then on the report spec property page there's a button that says update regions effective RSF so in order to do this we have to have a link between the components on this selected aluminium copper region and the corresponding region within the survey spectrum so let us now organize this the region is defined as aluminium 2s with a corresponding RSF and the tag field says aluminium 2s now if we go to the high resolution spectrum we find while the region says no tag and that is important because we need to exclude this region from the calculation we have a tag field for each one of these components that is identical and we need to make the region on the survey spectrum the same as the high resolution spectrum components so the entry needs to be exactly the same as in the components in the high resolution spectra so I enter and then press return and then I need to indicate here that we've got something different from aluminium so I'm using the name to indicate this but this this name can be different the key connection between the region on the survey and the components on the high resolution spectrum will be this tag field so these must be the same for both survey and high resolution data so now that I have the same tag field for the region on the survey spectrum and the components on the high resolution spectrum if I select both of these as if I'm going to do a quantification report based on these then I can say update regions effective RSF and when I press this button it says do you want to do this adjustment and having performed that operation the effective RSF has now been transferred from the high resolution data based on the peak fit the calculated effective RSF into the region on the survey spectrum at which point we can now start adding regions that have elemental RSFs and will contribute to the overall atomic concentration calculation so for example if I want to add a region to the oxygen as part of a quantification then I add the region and as a result I get an elemental RSF here and I do need a tag field here if I'm going to use quantification by tags because only regions and components that have values in the tag field that are a string other than no tag will be included in the quantification this means that I have to go through and create regions corresponding to the different elements of interest so for the sake of argument I will add two more and these will be the chromium I'm going to do that on the basis of the chromium 3p and the reason that I'm using the 3p for the chromium and also I'm going to use the iron 3p and is that if you look at the spectrum we although we do have 2p and 2p and 2p for chromium copper and iron there are an awful lot of OJ peaks here so defining a valid background given the context of all these OJ peaks is quite difficult plus the information gathered from photo emission peaks of this kinetic energy means that we're we're looking at pretty much the same kinetic energy and therefore the same sampling depth for all of these peaks which will also improve the quantification so once we have these we now have elemental RSFs these have been modified because this is an analyzer x-ray source angle of 90 degrees so 
the value that has been extracted for p orbitals is adjusted for the fact that we do have a non-magic angle instrument in this case and the quantification will be corrected for the effective attenuation length and that's the escape depth correction and we will assume a bulk type material so we're going with RSFs that are Schofield cross sections that have been modified for the angular distribution correction at 90 degrees. So the quantification that is reported here as a percent concentration is correct for these three lines. This will be the relative proportions based on atomic concentration calculation for oxygen, chromium and iron. But at this point we have a combined concentration of copper and aluminium which will need further analysis in terms of the peak decomposition using the components that are tagged in the high resolution spectra. Once all the quantification items have been defined appropriately including the right tag fields for these regions and the right tag fields for the components then a quantification report that is based on the effective RSF is obtained by selecting the combine with tags option on the standard report. So the survey and the high resolution spectrum both selected. We press this button and we end up with a quantification report that gives us the report in terms of the regions and then also the components that came from the high resolution spectrum. And what we have now is a report in terms of percent concentration where these three entries are calculated based on regions from the survey spectrum only and then we have a region from the survey spectrum that gives us the amount of aluminium and copper as a percentage and then the components from the high resolution spectrum provide the breakdown of this number here from the region on the survey spectrum in terms of the proportions of the aluminium metal, the copper and then the aluminium oxide. So we're now in a position to return to these data and consider how you would quantify an entire profile using tags. And this is the origin of this new button here that says update regions effective RSF and the problem is that for each one of these survey spectra and each one of these high resolution spectra the proportion of copper and aluminium oxide and metal changes and so the effective RSF changes as this profile progresses so we need a means of first of all fitting an entire set of aluminium copper peaks and then extracting the effective RSF and placing it in the appropriate region within the survey spectrum. So let's proceed now and we start with the spectrum that has already got regions defined. So these are the regions we're going to use to profile these data. So we're going to propagate. So now we have a propagation throughout this profile and we have regions defined on each of these survey spectra. Now we also need to work out a peak fit for each one of these. Now this is not quite as straightforward as propagating regions. When we propagate we have to make sure we have an, a valid peak fit throughout all of these spectra. So we'll propagate regions components and And once fitted, we can now go through and assess how well the peak model has performed throughout this profile. You can see that the copper has moved a little bit out of the way at, on these initial spectra. So we're going to have to do something about propagating from a valid region around where there's more oxide. 
now we can go through and perform the operation of updating the effective RSF based on the selected survey spectra and the corresponding copper aluminium spectrum. So let's bring up the quantification parameters dialog window and say update effective RSF and this is going to do this on the basis of the selection just as a quantification would be performed so when I press yes each one of these survey spectra let's put the regions property page up and select a survey spectrum and if we look here you can see the effective RSF has been added on the basis of this peak model that's from the high resolution data and as I step down you can see that each and every one of these regions now has a slightly different effective RSF that is reflecting the different proportions of the aluminium metal and oxide and the copper within the high resolution data. So these are all contributing to different effective RSFs. So now we can perform a profiling operation based on tags. And once again, this is a new button on the report spec property page that says create profile from tags. And this will apply to these selected VAMAS blocks. So when I say create profile from tags, then what happens is we'll see there's a new string that appears here that says control F8 for profile. And this means that although we're looking at the spectrum file here, we can now do control F8 and rather than seeing the spectra we now see a profile that has been gathered from these tags. So we need to remove from this profile the region, this is this one here, and we now have a depth profile that is constructed from a set of regions from the survey spectrum such as the oxygen, the iron 3P, the chromium 3P, while we've got the trace for the aluminium oxide, metal and the copper coming from the high resolution proportion applied to the intensity as measured by the survey spectrum using the effective RSF.